Hey guys, welcome to another video from Historic Militaria. Today I wanted to look at part two of some uh, Soviet Nagant revolvers, Soviet and Russian Nagant revolvers. And if you've taken a look at part one, you know this was the standard Soviet and Russian sidearm that was produced from about 1895 to about 1945 and is still in service in some sort of more remote areas with uh, maybe rural police forces and whatnot and was uh, in fact used by the uh, Russian Railroad Police up until about 2010. So uh, these old revolvers, which production stopped uh, during World War II, uh, are still being used and were still being used by a major governmental entity for quite some time. Uh, just kind of goes to the re reliability of them. And, you know, for all their weaknesses and sort of strangeness, they are a gun that can be easily repaired and very simple to use. As we talked about, they're a seven shot revolver firing the 7.62 by 38 rimmed round. Uh, typical uh, Soviet and Russian caliber, everything pretty much is going to be 762. 762 by 39, 762 by 54, 762 by 38, 762 by 25. They like their 30 caliber rounds. So, without further ado, uh, this is a standard World War II. Uh, this one made just in the pre-war period of 1939 with your big Tula star. And this is not a uh, refurbished example. This is a non-import marked uh, bring back at some point uh, with your original checked grips with uh, no refinish or anything like that. Uh, don't have the fish scale grips, uh, sort of the bigger scales that you're going to see on the refurbed revolvers. Uh, your original nice bright blue, not sort of the dull blue that you're going to see after on, um, on ones that were refurbed after the war. And always kind of a sure sign of a non-refurb is the fire blue on your small parts and your fire blue on your trigger. All in all, just a, a really pretty gun with, with very nice uh, looking bluing and and nice finish even though it's a soviet era gun they still especially in their pre-war guns they really seem to spend time making a pretty fine looking revolver and a fine looking um, svt-40 you'll see a uh, nice bluing on those as well this one does of course have a chip out of the grip right there but uh, that's pretty common on these unfortunately so you will see that um, and then moving on to another example here, we'll take a look at one that was made during the Red Terror of the, or the Stalin's Great Terror uh, in 1937 at Tula. And this one is almost uh, perfect blue with your typical uh, lanyard loop. Pretty much every gun at the time had a lanyard loop. These lan lanyard loops do not swivel like a broom handle would uh, with your fine, finely checked uh, grips with your really nice looking bluing here and your typical uh, front sight, typical markings. Your serial numbers are going to be from Tula up until about, I want to say about 1937, 38. You are not going to have uh, the Russian Cyrillic prefix. You're just going to have a straight five, four or five digit serial number generally. And you'll notice that on Mosin's as well. Uh, Tula started adding the Cyrillics in the very late 30s. Uh, you'd have uh, two Cyrillic characters at the start of these. And uh, that's your sight picture that you're going to have. Not the easiest guns in the world to sight, but they do sight pretty nicely. This one is, in fact, uh, loaded. You can actually see your rounds in it. Uh, so they project out and they are pretty prevalent as well. And in part one, we looked at the cartridge and how it actually, uh, the bullet is seated in the cartridge. When you cock the hammer, it actually does push the cylinder forward into uh, the barrel a little bit so that there's their perfect gas seal and you really don't lose any gas whatsoever. And moving on, we've got a an example that was actually made uh, way pre-World War II, right sort of after the uh, revolutionary period. 
the Russian Revolutionary Period. This is what your markings, your side plate markings, are going to look like for those. This is a 1927 example. Uh, again, really nice bluing, fire blued on the trigger, on the hammer, and your trigger as well. Uh, again, this is a Tula example, but with the CCCP, noting that this is definitely produced by a communist country. They want you to know that. Um, other than that, very standard looking gun. Uh, again, your small parts are going to be fire blued. You are going to have the Tula mark right there. And on the World War I guns, you actually would have World War I and before, you'd actually have the Tsarist symbol there. And we'll take a look at that in just a second on another example. Again, seven shot revolver typical looking gun nothing amazing about this one other than they are pretty unusual to find non-refurbished uh, this old uh, not a lot of these are floating around but uh, this is actually an example of a 1915 i want to say 1915 example uh, made at tula as well and again that's going to be your typical Tula dating. Uh, pretty much all of them are going to be marked right here. And again, Tula was the main manufacturer of these. So for a 1915 date, this is an original World War I example that was not uh, refurbed. Uh, this one has definitely seen some pretty heavy use. It's got some, some rust there. Uh, this one's actually missing the lanyard loop. Uh, somebody took it off for whatever reason. Uh, this one is interesting because it is actually a single action only gun. Uh, outwardly, they are identical, the single action and double action. But during World War I, uh, they made a single action version for the so-called private's version is what is what it's known as. Uh, supposedly, it was given to uh, soldiers who were of lower rank, whereas the single doubles were given to soldiers who were NCOs. So if you notice, you can pull the trigger on this one and nothing happens. You actually have to cock the hammer every time between shots and you've got your about a 12 pound trigger pull on that. So it's definitely not something that I'd want to uh, rely on for fast shooting. But uh, outwardly, they're going to be identical. So it's really kind of hard to tell. But generally, as far as I understand it, only the World War I guns are going to be single action and double action only um, or at least made that way this one does still have the czarist stamp right there and it's definitely again seen some use some traces of fire bluing but a lot has faded away over the years um, this one who knows where it came from but it has definitely seen some service and then we've got uh, ones like this that you may come across this only has a serial number and the marking has been cleanly removed. So there is absolutely nothing here. And if you look on this side, also your marking has been removed there. Uh, so it's really impossible to tell what year this one was made in. However, this is a single action only as well. So it is not a single double. So my suspicion is that it is a World War One era gun. Uh, also, there's a little bit under heavy magnification, you can see a little bit of the original uh, Tula markings here. And it definitely looks like the Tula markings from the World War One or pre-World War One era. So my best suspicion is that this was actually a uh, Tsarist gun made probably during World War I that uh, was seized by communist forces and then uh, they got rid of all the symbols of the Imperial Russian Tsar and also got rid of them here, just neatly took them off and turned it into a sanitized gun that can be used by Red Army soldiers uh, without looking at horrible offensive Tsarist symbols. So. Uh, this is kind of an interesting one. You will see a lot of Mosin rifles as well from World War I that have Zara symbols uh, peened out, crossed out, X'd out, 
completely obliterated. Sometimes that was done in other countries, but my suspicion for this gun is that it was probably done uh, in Russia for Soviet use during right around the time of the revolution when it seemed like everything czarist was evil and needed to be gotten rid of. But uh, this gun has survived relatively intact, uh, all matching. Uh, one thing I will note is that the serial numbers do reappear on the cylinders. They will be serialized here. And the easiest way is actually just to take the cylinder out to read it. And the way you do that, I won't actually do it, but you open your loading gate and you pull this out like you were gonna unload it, turn this, and this piece right here, uh, there's a lip right here, you just pull this piece out and it comes right out and then you can just pop your cylinder out. It's pretty easy to do, great instructions online. YouTube likes to demonetize any videos that actually show any gun disassembly, so I don't really like my stuff getting demonetized. Not that I'm in it for money, but you know every little bit helps so just wanted to give you guys an example of a an unmarked one a original world war one production gun uh, a communist era produced gun and then of course your world war ii ones which you will come across and here's an example of a original probably world war ii era holster uh, as you can see they're going to be this sort of typical leather from the time period a couple of belt loops on the back here with a pocket for your ammunition to hold 12 or 14 rounds of ammunition and then you will also see and granted this is a tokarev holster but they're going to look identical the same kind of pebble grain leather. These are going to be generally post-war uh, made for Tokarev's and also for uh, Nagant revolvers. This obviously is a Tokarev because it's got a magazine holder. But they're going to be generally cheaply made. They're going to have stamps like this in them. Uh, again, same colors. Looks like pigskin. Uh, these are pretty common, so if you come across one of these, don't pay any great amount for it but they're nice to have if you especially if you've got a refurbed uh negant revolver and they they're fairly common so go ahead and pick one up while you can still get them and if you uh have to have an original uh these are definitely a little more rare you don't come across them too much but uh if you can find them for a decent price i would definitely pick one up uh generally the condition is okay on them i've seen some that are pretty horrible some that are pretty nice but uh, hopefully you have found this video uh informative and interesting and maybe whet your appetite a little bit for the negant revolver which i think is kind of a uh an unsung hero of the soviet gun collecting community and uh certainly shooting them is is quite interesting as well the ammunition is still available i believe fioki and maybe even preview partisan makes it uh they're definitely available new production so you don't have to shoot old soviet uh, uh corrosive ammo but uh, as always remember to like subscribe and thanks for watching